It happened in Kansas City. The Contemporary Art Society, a group formed to promote art in the area, asked the artist Christo to the town. He had created, among other things, a running fence in California, a valley curtain in Colorado. He'd wrapped a coast in Australia. Could he create something in Kansas City? Yes, said Christo. He could wrap 2.8 miles of walkways in one of the city's most popular parks, Loose Park, with a shiny yellow nylon fabric. He called the color saffron. It would cost about $40,000. He'd prepare some sketches to show what it would look like. Great, said the society. They'd foot the bill, but first they had to get permission from the city. On February 14, 1978, Christo met with the Kansas City Park Board. Now, the proposal is that we recover this uh, almost around 13,000 uh, feet of uh, walkway, all different directions, with a thick uh, woven nylon. Instead to put gravel or tar or concrete, will be that material. Who yeah, made you the see, I have a problem. You know, it'd be just like saying uh, a tennis player coming up and saying. Why don't you take a baseball diamond and convert it to a tennis court? And I don't, can't really visualize what this is going to be like over the asphalt and concrete walkways. But in spite of park board reservations, Christo won them over. And at a later meeting... Anybody against it? <laughs> Let's start that way. Anybody for it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Mr. Chairman, I would approve, I would make a motion that we approve the, the uh, contemporary art project for the uh, for Loose Park, uh, following the guidelines that were set down with uh, uh, Mr. Crisco. The stage was set. At Sunset School, across from the park, Christo and company trained 13 professional workers, who in turn trained 67 unskilled workers from all over the country to install over 136,000 square feet of fabric over 2.8 miles of walkways, using 34,500 spikes, 34,000 brass grommets, and 250,000 feet of thread. Somewhere along the line, Christo decided to absorb the entire cost of the project himself, funding it through the sale of his drawings and sketches. The sketches sold for from $2,000 to $20,000. The final cost of the project would eventually rise from the projected $40,000 to over 130,000. Christo called it Wrapped Walkways. This program is about the effect this project had on the people who came to work and watch in the park. scattered all over. Grandview, Missouri. Chicago. Kansas City. I live in Connecticut. Georgia. Kansas City. I live in North Carolina. Uh, a friend of mine called me and said there was a Cristo project and asked me if I'd come down and work with it on her. With, with her on it. <laughs> when he was here doing his promotion, I saw the film The Running Fence and thought it was terrific. And they said if you were interested in working, to sign up. That's okay. how I did it. So you're here. Yeah. How you like it? I love it. It's the most fun thing I've done in a long time. Lots of fun. <laughs> it's, it's easy to work with. The weave's kind of loose. That's the only problem with it. And um, it's got a good advantage in the shine and everything and, and the way it changes color. I enjoy it. I, I like the way it looks and everything. And working on it is the best time I've ever had in my life. You know, working with the people and I feel like I'm doing something. Oh, I think it's wonderful out here working. <laughs> it's a, a way to get people to look at their environment differently. And um, it's kind of a nice thing to see people interacting together where they, you know, they, there was this one man, he's been in the park for years and years, walks park every day and uh, never knew anybody, but he recognized faces. And he was talking, because they were talking about this. I think that's lovely. And I think it's worth it if it's just that.
What do you know about Christo? Not much. Just what we've read in the papers. Uh, not a thing. Not a thing. Just that he's an artist. I know he made quite a bit of money selling some of his other paintings by doing this. Out in California, he wrapped a coastline. I know he wraps buildings. I didn't know much until just a few weeks ago. I uh, know all the other projects he's done in the United States. Very little, except that I did meet him and he didn't seem to be overwhelmed by my presence. It's something new to me, you know, in uh, Minneapolis, we don't have nothing like this. But. I've never seen this many people in Loose Park in years, and we've lived in Kansas City all our life. Can you get the fountain and all the gold steps, yeah. too? Everything? Yeah. Okay. I had a gentleman uh, tell me last Sunday he's never seen this many people out here in 14 years. I think it's beautiful, yes, really it. gorgeous. It has really brought the community together. I walk here nearly every day with my dog, and uh, it, I've talked to people, and they say that this is like streets of gold, the yellow brick road, and I've talked to foreigners from all over, and they think it is really a wonderful experience, and I too. I think we're lucky. It's really spectacular. I think it looks great. I think it attracts people and I think it, it you know, is great for walking on, really, you know, notice your feet and it's fun. I'm the park floor culturist. You notice the sidewalks and before you didn't notice them because uh, uh, they were in bad shape and there's so much else to the landscaping in the park that at least I notice. I look at the trees, I look at the grass, I look at the roses and the people. But your conscience is something else, you know, it's, uh, it's kind of sexy. I admit I had a certain skepticism about it. I couldn't quite picture it, frankly. I didn't have the, uh, uh, let's call it imagination or whatever. But I'm absolutely delighted with it. I think it's absolutely thrilling. It's poetic. It's fun. It's a delight. It amplifies what is naturally there. It actually, it pays tribute to the uh, park itself, uh, which is beautifully laid out, and which Christo must have had in mind when he did the thing in the first place. I think they look like molten copper. They're beautiful. Beautiful. It's a wonderful idea. Terrific idea. I think it's joyful and fun and beautiful. Delightful. Pretty. It's unique. It's spectacular. Gorgeous. It's great. Personally, I think it's a bunch of junk. <laughs> I think it looks cheap. A little contrived. <laughs> I think it looks messy and, um, and I, I think it ruins the natural appearance of the park and I think it's a uh, ridiculous waste of money. I like the way it looks, but uh, I really kind of think it's a big con, but I can't say too much because I'm here with everybody else. What is the point of the whole thing? 
Is it a, is it a cultural activity? Uh, it's a chance to be in probably one of the most openly expressive artworks that's been done in the 70s, yes. That's a work of art. It's art that involves people on a completely different level than like coming to museums. That's a work of art on Venus. <laughs> our, our whole culture has become very stuffy about what art is about. I wouldn't call it art, but I think, you know, it's bringing people out. People are enjoying it. Wrapped walkways, wrapped buildings, wrapped coastlines. It's a child's idea of what art is all about. It takes us back to our childhood and makes us re-see what art is all about. It's uh, an idea that it's got a long tradition. Uh, it goes back to the 19th century medieval revival with William Morris and people like that who wanted to make art back into a craft that people could enjoy doing as well as seeing. And art wouldn't simply distance the audience uh, from the artist and, and the artwork from uh, the, uh, the art audience, but would involve the audience in it. The audience would become part of the artwork or become artists themselves. And that reminds me in my life of being a, a child back in the second grade with the finger paints and everything. It's art becoming a process of doing as well as something to be seen. It can be marvelous. There are a lot of people here tonight who are here for the wrong reasons. They're here because it's trendy or it's a social thing to do or because there isn't anything else to do. But there are a lot of people who are here for the right reason too because it's a lot of fun. It's uh, going to be on display for a period of two weeks. You know, I think that they ought to keep it for a little while longer. Well, I think they could probably leave it on a little bit longer. I think they should leave it like it is. That's fine. I wish I could have some of it. <laughs> Cover my sidewalks at home. No, I'd use it for a drop cloth or something. <laughs> well, it has to go sometime. <laughs> The material is being donated to the park department. We have heard they may use it for things like weed control or frost control, but I don't know specifically what it's going to be used for. If I may, I'd like to quote the Latin poet Horace, who said in Latin, he didn't know English, de gustibus non est disputandum, which means for the benefit of the uneducated, you, one may not argue about taste. I don't know, it's not a waste of time. I can think of so many better places to put the money and stretching it out on a load of sidewalks. If you like it, okay. If you don't, okay. And art, before it's anything else, has got to be fun. It's got to be entertaining. It's got to be, it's got to be something that makes you want to stand up and run around and do something different with your life than you've been doing with it before. One may not argue about taste.